In this video, guys, we're gonna look at why did the crude oil contract actually trade at a negative price? Stay tuned. Hey guys, warm welcome to you. All right, so as I'm filming this recently, we've had a really unusual scenario where crude oil was trading for a negative value. Now, you may be watching this further down the line. This may happen multiple times again, who knows? But the interesting thing is, is why it occurred and what it actually means. What does it mean and what has actually been going on? So when you think of a, a, a price, you think a price is zero and that's a, a, a kind of fixed fee for it, right? If you go, can't go below zero. But crude oil actually traded in negative values. So what does that actually mean? So normally, this would be my barrel of crude oil. I would sell it to you and you would give me money in exchange. So I go, here you go, here's a barrel of crude oil. And you'd say, thanks very much, here's $20 back or whatever the price of crude oil might be. And that's just normally as an exchange or any commodity, right? But in this instance, you had a really unique scenario where here's a barrel of crude oil and because the price was now negative, here's some money to take it off my hands. In actual fact, it was more like 30, minus $37. So here's a barrel of crude oil and here's $37 as well. Please take it away from me. And that was the deal that was going on. Now, why is it like that? What actually happened? Now, bear in mind, guys, I am not a crude oil expert about the nuances and supply demand. This is me approaching it from a pure trader's perspective. Uh, so if you want to dig really, really deep into it, then you know, go and check out some of the more nuanced articles by some of the experts in the field. But this is the way that I see it, and I think it's super interesting, guys, from supply demand perspective, super interesting from a trader's perspective as well. So the scenario is this, guys. Don't forget that a futures contract is, is kind of a unique trading vehicle because in crude oil there's a, a futures contract for every month now it depends on the, what a market you're trading for crude oil that's the way it goes and each of those trades a unique price so there's a, a may april june july etc etc all the way along and there's most activity in what's called the front month which is the one where most of the volume is done so you get some speculators in there if you and i were trading directly on the exchange that's what we trade but there's also activity in the far month because someone might not want to have crude or delivered until let's say September or whenever they are. So they would buy a futures contract in September and if they were looking to get delivery when that expired, they would get delivery in September as opposed to June or July earlier on. So you can define when you want it delivered. Now the, the thing that happened with this uh, negative price was that the, the, the month that was about to expire was really starting to trade very, very weak. You know, the price was falling hard. Now, the other far months were still falling, but the, the near month was really, really falling hard. Now, some people do trade the spreads across the two, across the two or three. Some people might sort of buy a front month, sell the back month and trade uh, the spread, the calendar spread. But in this specific example, we don't need to go into kind of advanced details of that, but let's just think about supply demand, what actually happened here. So we had a situation where coronavirus is in full swing, lots of things are in lockdown. So not only does that restrict potentially access and storage capabilities, but we also had a situation where for a while, a lot of crude oil had gone into storage. So a lot of the storage facilities were full. So you had this almost this perfect storm where you had crude oil that you had to take delivery. If you bought a futures contract and it expired, then you would have to take delivery of that crude oil. That's how it works. Now you and I speculating we'll close that position before uh, we have to take delivery because we don't want uh, barrels of crude oil rolling up on our drive or you know, <laughs> kilos of uh, corn or whatever it is being dumped on our driveway. No, we don't. So, but if you're trading it from a, a producer's perspective or consumer's perspective, that's how it works. Now. We had this situation where storage is full, demand has also been massively suppressed. So the consumption of crude oil from the oil consumers, they don't want it as much because the economic, it's just the economic uh, engine, if you like, has just been stalled because of the coronavirus. So storage full, demand has gone right down, and these guys are still pumping it out. So all of a sudden, they've got all this oil and they need to get rid of it and they need to get rid of it at this point in time. And what do they do with it? So if it's coming out of the ground now and that's it, you, you have to do something with it. So they were in a, a situation where nobody wanted to buy it because there was loads in storage. There was no demand for it. 
but then you had the people who were, who were producing the oil who had to sell it at some point. Now, of course, when there's no value to it, it now becomes a liability because there's gonna be some safety aspects about storing crude oil. There's gonna be all sorts of things that it costs money to, to store crude oil. And when all the storage is full, you might have to pay an awful lot of money to store crude oil, so much so that it just becomes an absolute huge liability. So we had this situation, guys, and if we go to this kind of uh, whiteboard here, we've got supply demand, which is constantly driving price on different futures contracts. So June, July, August, all supply demand, when do they want it? So the front month had this real anomaly where the demand just went down massively, just no demand whatsoever. The consumers didn't want any oil because they couldn't sell the byproduct they were making, whether they were making jet fuel or whatever it was. They just, there's no uh, demand for it from their perspective. So they don't want any oil, they're not buying. Now the storage is completely full as well, so you have this issue on the supply side where oil producers are still pumping out oil. It's not so easy just to decommission a rig or decommission a pump and just turn things off in an instant with a key. You know, there's stuff that's coming online and coming through that, is, that needs to go somewhere now. And those guys are still, they're still kind of pumping it, even though maybe in the future they can dial operations down and allow for this. But this was stuff that was coming out now. They can't put it in storage because there is no storage. Or if it is, it's super expensive because like anything, guys, you know, when it's scarce, the price goes goes up. And so we had this situation where for May delivery, people were saying, hey, take my crude oil and take money because this is just going to be a huge liability for me. I have nowhere to put it. I need somewhere to put this. And of course, when you have that huge supply demand imbalance, you know what happens to price. And the fact is with this specific contract, it could actually trade negative, which allowed in a way, you know, this is this makes perfect sense because it's, it's finding an equilibrium and it's a super rare occurrence, guys. I don't know if there's ever been an occurrence where we've had, a, I don't think, in fact, we know we haven't traded a negative on crude oil before, but it makes sense in a way because sometimes you think, well, is zero not, the shouldn't be the limit well even at zero these guys couldn't give it away literally literally you know the phrase they couldn't give it away they couldn't give it away they had to have an given incentive for you to take it which is why it traded negative at that point in time need an incentive to take it so there's still a deal to be done there was still a transaction taking place and the buyer of it said okay buyer technically said okay i'll take the oil and i'll take the 37 bucks because i can just about make that work and, and that's how a trade is taking place so that's why crude oil went negative, guys. Literally no demand, storage just full, and there was supply coming on that had to, something had to happen with it. Um, and this may well happen uh, again in the future. Who knows? But it's something to watch out for, something to be aware of, super interesting. You know, all these new things that are occurring under different scenarios with the economy and the markets, I find them super interesting. I'm sure you do as well, um, especially as traders, active traders and certain guys. We, know, we love the markets, don't we? We love the whole supply demand thing. We love seeing how the things work. And when we see new things like this, I think it's super, super interesting, super useful to dig into as well. So true su supply and demand caused crude oil to trade at a negative price. If you like this kind of stuff, guys, a thumbs up is always appreciated from you, as is your support from your subscriptions, your comments, and all that other good stuff. Stick around for more bits and pieces. We'll talk about trade ideas, psychology, strategies, and time to time, little bits like this. Take care. Bye-bye.